welcome everyone <clears throat> good morning and good afternoon evening to some good morning monica good morning and all good morning monica good Namaste. morning everyone hi hi damien so you know it's a long exploration that we have embarked upon and i'm glad that at least a few of us are able to join live which is very beneficial to have good interaction discussion questions so the thread that i thought we could pick up from is last time we were uh, almost touching upon the article essay by nolini kant gupta uh, to love man and we reflected upon the article that how loving a man is more difficult than to love the divine <laughs> so but we have to embark upon this difficult process otherwise what's the fun so i thought today i will pick up the threads from uh, maybe uh, in the beginning we heard uh, tigna than sharing about four elements of true love maybe some of us may remember and the four elements of true love that he shared were maitri means friendship second was uh, karuna is like to totally uh, have sensitivity for the other person's issues also so and he did not use the word compassion so i am avoiding refraining the word compassion because he said that uh, compassion although is that's what is the translation that we use in english but it's not a very good word for karuna because compassion means to suffer along with so come passion come is together c o m and then compassion e means to suffer so when you suffer i suffer but he wanted to share that if you in your suffering i am suffering then uh, i can't be of benefit to you so that's why he was uh, specifically stressing upon the word karuna so these are a few uh, the first two elements of true love maitri which is friendship to be able to be friendly with uh, those people who we claim to love like having a good grounded friendship companionship and then second was karuna which is com transliterated as compassion but more than that and the third was uh, upeksha 
which is a kind of a disinterestedness uh, mean that I don't want anything from you. There is no desires and hungers that I want to fulfill from you. So that is Upeksha, a kind of a disinterested love. And it is very amazing to see that how truth is all encompassing. We all see truth everywhere. So in mother's words also, mother shares about a kind of a disinterested love. Even when we turn to the divine, in the beginning we want, okay, since I have turned to you, may you fulfill my demands. You know, that's how we turn to the divine. That keep my family protected, keep my children protected. But that's again the same worldly mind that we carry. So to have a disinterested kind of a love, which is I love for the joy of love. Because loving mother or loving anyone brings joy in the being, that's it. You know? So there is no other means to an end that I want to accomplish that. You know? So it, a kind of a disinterest in love. So that's the third element of true love. And the fourth one was according to Tignathan and you know, Buddhist uh, texts. Fourth was uh, mudita, which was joy. To, able to, to be able to have joy in relationship, delight in relationship. You know, not that uh, you are making the other person cry and the other person makes you feel, you know, sob again and again. That cannot be called as love. So I feel that just a reminder of these four elements for me particularly is very important because whenever I begin to operate from the desiring self, which is always wanting, 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 you know, then I can remind myself of these four elements of love and uh, act from that space. You know, so to be sensitive to other person's issues and needs and, you know, uh, to be able to be in karuna or in compassion with others person suffering and to be able to benefit that person to have offer friendship, offer time, offer presence, offer joy and delight in companionship you know? and offer time and space you know, many a time uh, we need space to have lots of quiet time to ourselves so to be able to honor that time when people around us who we claim to love they need that time so not to demand from them that since i love you you deserve to give me back you know you have to give me back so this wanting to get back I think that's what we have to maybe work upon because this really hurts very badly. So that's what I thought I'll kind of pull this thread out for maybe more reflection and questions. So yeah, any comments here, anyone? Any challenges that we face? Anyone wants to share anything? Yeah, hi Monica. So, I think in the last uh, uh, in the last session that had happened, I remember towards the end uh, there was this parental love, right? Discussed, yeah. So uh, between the child and you know the parent, and uh, we of I, I have also seen it myself in me <laughs> that sometimes uh, the love that is you know uh, offered. Uh, as a parent also sometimes there is conditioning right and um, of course you notice it but yet when it sort of comes up you know you you don't want to be in that space right you don't want to, and sometimes you do think that oh I I did this for you know your child your, your own child and yet there is so much of difficulty um so that was something that, yeah, I thought if we could, you know, if you could throw some light on that through uh, words of Mother and Sri Aurobindo and today's this thing. So that is where I find, of course, it's 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 a lot uh, having gone through sessions and it does help, you know, in many, many ways. Uh, but sometimes it's suddenly and especially when now the relationship, especially with my daughter, because she's a teenager, it just sort of is a constant like, yeah, oh, all right, all right. So the steps are very gentle, but yet sometimes I find myself giving up on some days and, you know, 
then I, I, yeah, at that time, I really feel that what should I do? So thank you. That's where thank I am. You. Yeah, thank you. So would anyone want to share since I don't have personally teenagers so far, my children are aged a little younger. Uh, so would anyone want to share their reflections before I share something from maybe teachers, masters? Would anyone want to share their reflections on it? Okay, so I'm assuming maybe no comment at the moment. It's a challenging topic, Nandini, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a very uh, tricky sphere, as you were sharing, yeah, to yeah. walk very and gently. I, and... Yeah, because uh, I, I, I recent, not recently, about a couple of months back, I, I was watching something and there was this beautiful, so it's between the two mothers, you know, and how they, they all have, of course, teenage children. But she says something so beautiful in one of the sentences. She says, sometimes we just want to hold them again, you know, like a little fruit and gently sort of, you know, just caress it. And but yet, yeah, and you also have to sort of let go. And and then because they are wanting to, you know, show that autonomy, they are wanting to be, you know, the part adult, part child. And that, yeah, I find, yeah, so, you know, there are days that oh, where do I let the child be and where do I let the adult be, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, thank you. Yeah. I think one thing which is very, very crucial, I feel, is that as parents, we need to have really, truly our own lives. So we are not just a parent, we are a human being first. You know, so, and if we have our independent, fulfilling lives, along with, of course, uh, rearing up and caring for children. I think that really helps because then the children don't become the center of our world because that really puts a lot of burden on them. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. that that was something uh, it's it's been. Uh, so the you know, there has been this. Um, it's like how you describe, you know, there was dependency, then there is independence. And now it is more interdependent. I sort of, you know, all right, you these are steps that you can take these are steps i can take and i you know respect that those boundaries so that's been a learning yes uh, initially you you know you want to you want to protect yet you're you're giving wings right but still that the you know sometimes you go out like it's a simple example going out in the evenings i know how much they want to go because you know uh, obviously they find like daytime going out so boring I mean it's just here and there yeah uh, but somehow the night seems so much more exciting because they want to go out and the friends and everything and all you're left wondering is oh don't have this don't drink that don't you know this thing and uh, so yeah and at that time uh, I do that I just say you know I mean I pray to mother or I just pray to an archangel and just say but I'm just offering this and Please take care. That's absolutely, all. absolutely. And this is what we have to do. Exactly. This, right. this letting go and knowing that just, just like I am a child of the divine, hmm. my children are also children oh, of yeah. divine. You know, so there is yeah. only one mother and father. Hmm. Only one. And we are all at the equal level. Right. So although it may appear that, see, I am the mother and there is the child. But actually, we are all children and then there is mother and father. Mm -hmm. So we, to have that trust, to slowly cultivate that kind of a faith that something knows more than me. Someone knows more than me. There is an eye watching. You know? And not only above, it's like inside also. The divine at the same time is immanent, outside right. and beyond everything. And yeah. wouldn't he know better? Wouldn't she know better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah. that I think that only has to be cultivated. This kind yeah. of letting go and uh, again, as mother, you know, it's very good example to share here that uh, whenever in ashram, anybody mm. go in the beginning time, whenever uh, these very few sincere disciples were there, 
so mother would tell them that wherever whenever you are going outside of ashram premises just let me know hmm now why hmm. would mother say that one can question you know so that's what we feel you know that if my child is going anywhere you know he should let me know he should be safe you know so as mothers hmm. we worry mother father whatever you know worry be concerned so right. then mother shared that if you are going anywhere outside since there are everywhere all kinds of forces influences what i do is i extend my bubble of protection to you wherever you are going uh, okay. so this is what we can do yeah but when my children are going out and i am worried and concerned since all kind of influences are there absolutely true you know so and you don't want them to get under any so wrong sort of an influence right right you, you actually visualize mother's bubble of protection bubble of around protection. your children right that mother and um, shri aurobindo are looking after them you know they are they are seeing you know they are taking care so this has to be cultivated this offering of mm -hmm. our children and putting of border burden of from our shoulders and to give the burden to mother and shri aurobindo you know you do okay. best but this has okay. to be cultivated because by default we see worry and doubt and confusion that's true yeah yeah and a lot of letting go as you were sharing you know has to happen yeah yeah right and knowing that as growing up you know haven't we gone through so called wrong influences i personally have yeah <laughs> yes. and we have you know we have found our yeah. way through right so i think to have that faith that even through the so called wrong influences we do find our way through it's a win win situation and parallelly also extending the bubble of protection giving them under the care of mother and shurubindo consciously consciously offering that and trusting that each experience is very important for for the developing soul just like all oh, my experiences yeah. have been so important for me right yeah thank it you it takes a lot of course you know one has to yeah. the sensitive heart too much <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a it's a yeah it's a definitely yeah and over the years when you you know it it's just that i guess when they are just about you know that letting go you know that little bit of uh, push and pull and push and pull and it's a constant yeah and that yeah i i'm i'm i mean i'm grateful every day to my daughter also because i have learned so much no because as a teenager i was i mean our world was different you know whatever parents said okay you sort of listened and said ha theek hai you would also just sort of you jo bhi you know gusse mein bole ya whatever but these days the there's so much more the gentler approach like you you cannot always uh, you know put your authority or your you know your tone of voice everything that has to come out there is so much more yeah so that learning has been uh, definitely a, yeah i would say like a gift absolutely yeah yeah thank and you to honor, yeah. and to honor and to honor their individual uh, and yes yes, yes. Yeah. right <laughs> thank you yeah thank you yeah and also you know it it cultivates a lot of humility in us that we don't know the best we don't know what the child needs at times we may know but we, there can't be a surety so again and again i feel i personally do it for my children all the time you know that just like i am a child of the mother they also are children of the mother and mother and shurubindo know the best what is to be you know done so you can offer your suggestions you can offer your word of advice or living by example but after that you can't do really much you know and also i feel yeah. not to have a superior inferior kind of relationship with as you were sharing you know right but yes. to have a friendly yes. yeah friendly approach yeah yes right. along with the firmness also which is required mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> right Yeah, would anyone want to share or add on? Yeah, okay. So we'll uh, I thought we'll take up 
one passage today uh, to reflect upon and read, go through. So, yeah, again, using the same booklet that I had shared with all of you. I hope all of us have that. So, it's a new compilation uh, by Shio Rubindu Society Pondicherry uh, on preparing for yoga through human love. Yeah, Nandini, I wanted to add on that there is a uh, book by... Uh, David Marshak uh, mm. on evolutionary parenting. Oh, okay. It's a very good right. book and uh, I did a short uh, interaction with him. Uh, it was offered by Gnostic Center. So I uh, did that oh, course okay. with him okay. and uh, he shared two booklets with us. One of them, these, this book. And I asked him that if I can share it around and he said, yes, of course, you know, you can share it around. So I will share that book with you, Evolutionary Parenting, All right. where he has right. uh, done a very beautiful synthesis of three different approaches, Mother and Shio um, hmm. I think Rudolf Steiner and, Steiner. Ah, yeah, all right. and uh, Hazrat Inayat Khan. And, oh. and then he's also done a lot of case studies like following children up from when they were little and then then what they are doing uh, in the teenage uh, so it, maybe that would be really interesting for you to read since you have yes, teenage yes. children at home yeah i'll share it with you sure thank you so human expression of love and this is how we have to i think go from one rung of love to the next one so may, may I request if anyone would like to maybe read the first passage for us? I can read. Yeah, please. Mother, what kind of love is that which says, if you love me, I shall love you? If you love me, I shall love you. That's exactly the way men speak. If you love me, I love you. If you don't love me, I don't love you. This is just the most human expression of love. And it goes still further. They apply it also to their relation with the divine. They say to the divine, if you do what I want, I shall say that you love me and I shall love you. But if you don't do what I want, then I won't think at all that you love me and I certainly will not love you. That's how it is. That means that it becomes commercial. Yeah. Anything you want to share, Neela, since you are unmuted? Yeah, I think uh, like this is something that I keep observing or like when I see, like especially these movie scenes or like whatever it's shown, right? When people go to a temple to pray for a certain thing. And then when that doesn't happen, like whoever the character is like very upset with God and like, you know, I didn't get what I want, so I'm not going to go to a temple. So, yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's very common but something feels very wrong about it yeah absolutely and i think this is the shift that needs to happen from a transactional mind what mother says you know towards the end it becomes commercial so commercial is if i give you 10 rupees you give me 10 toffees back <laughs> you know this is how we do co commerce trade and the same transactional mind enters spirituality also when we enter into any relationship with the divine that since i pray for you in the morning in the evening and all these the times that i have fixed wouldn't you grant that my family should be protected <laughs> at least that much so this is how we bargain in the beginning that's the lowest kind of uh, rung of as mother shares you know the rungs of love so we have to see that this transactional mind is still in operation. Even when we have entered the path of spirituality, nothing has changed really. I still want something as a return gift. <laughs> what we, you know, when we go to birthday parties, children are very excited. What will I get as a return gift? So you know, if I love the divine or if I love this and that person, what will I get in return? I think this has to vanish this wanting in return because when I am doing anything for the joy of it then I actually don't want anything in return you know? those of us who have you know uh, looked at them anything that you love to do some of us may love to cook 
some of us may just love to walk or maybe talk with a friend or i don't know you know draw paint music so whenever we are involved in any activity which we are doing for the joy of that activity itself then we don't ask okay give me now this since i spent lo you know five uh, hours or whatever minutes you know practicing my music now you give me this we never ask for it because it's a joy it's a delight we already have the reward while parallelly being involved in that activity so i think that is how ideally one must live life that that's how you know in offices we say that okay five days i'm going to do that work which i don't really like so on the sixth day seventh day i really need this break so i don't ask that why on those five days i pushed myself to do something which i don't really appreciate which doesn't connect to my soul you know or towards the end of the month we wait for the salary to come why because we have burnt our asses off working for a stuff which we don't really appreciate and like but while if i am doing involved in any activity which is giving very soul fulfilling then i don't ask for money i don't ask for anything in return because the activity itself is a joy i think that's how uh, we have the capacity or the possibility to live our lives that each day i am involving myself in such stuff where i don't need anything in return and if it return comes it's like a prasad it's like a bonus and one feels grateful you know and gratefully takes it but if it doesn't come no waiting for that i think that would be really really beautiful even not only in the way we love but also the way we live and that's why many of us those of us who are in the engaged in voluntary acts like being a volunteer for someone or you know some somebody some work there we actually since it is a soul fulfilling work you are not demanding anything in return and if returns are given they are just added like bonus so this commercial aspect has to really we need a radical shift and change this transactional mind which always uses anything as a means to an end okay why am i surrendering so that i can my family can be protected or you know i can be looked after by the divine some special grace will come to me so that's not how the divine operates because the divine only operates for the benefit of each one of us which is the most beneficial for each one of us is that our soul comes out and takes the front seat becomes the king in our life so the divine would do all the things possible not just like he's sitting anywhere and doing the things up to us in the sense that we manifest those things for us which are best possible that our soul comes out and takes the front seat and many a times very tragic events can happen yeah yes meena yeah so uh, another thing that I will, like it just flashed me when you're saying right Now, nowadays the productivity and efficiency like of everyone has become such a of paramount importance right and what that really means is that we're working towards an outcome so you have to be productive in those eta so that you work towards a particular outcome but let's say when i'm doing something that is that's not really like an outcome driven thing for example like music or playing an instrument or whatever so i see that i'm applying the same mind to that like for example i spent 4 hours doing a painting and then i didn't get the outcome that i want and i suddenly feel oh my god you know it's like a naturally stress factor that oh, this didn't turn out well but it takes so much effort to be okay with not getting an outcome and just putting in the effort and like it's really difficult when we're doing like both things parallelly like one part of life you're doing something that's so outcome driven and the other part like it's okay we have to balance out and say it's okay to not get an outcome but i think it's very ingrained in like systems right now because we spend so much time in something that's very outcome driven and i think the same thing we apply to the divine also because we spend so much time praying for you and then you know i didn't get the outcome <laughs> it's like tallying a time sheet <laughs> yeah i think as you said you know that what if that the outcome is not to be driven by outcome if we yeah. can you know if 
all these experiences, the, the ones that you share, if that can lead me to a place that to actually become not outcome driven, that would be the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so beautiful. Yeah. And it's just the way how we have been, you know, evolutionary, if we see how capitalism came and uh, consumerism came and everything became just a more, you know, like, what will I get if I do this, you know, what will I earlier lives were not that outcome driven. So we see that this has come with the change of all these industries and, you know, more money driven society. So when our society has become more money driven, that's where all this corruption has entered, you know, this outcome driven work and all that. Otherwise, I think, uh, like we see in Satyug, for example, you know, then uh, not that much of distortion happened, but when everything became money driven, I think that really, really distorted. And that's why money, mother says that power and money, they are now in the hands of Asura. And that's why we see all the political leaders or, you know, even corrupt uh, leaders or uh, peoples in their spheres, they're just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating and using money for their own you know, domains. So uh, unequal distribution of money, since everything is money driven, you know, it's not talent driven, it's not spirit driven, it's not honor and dignity to each person, but it's okay, you have more money, okay, you can go first, you know, VIP, even in temples, I think you would know better South Indian temples, you know, there are VIP lines, aren't they? Yes. So it's very interesting how these things have become so distorted. And mother says that now the money has to go to right hands. It has to come to the hands of those who can be trustees of the money and not possessors of the money. Yeah. I think uh, that's sort of almost happening or at least beginning to happen because uh, like when COVID ended, we had this great resignation phase where there were a lot of people leaving companies with no, with no other job in hand. They were just okay to leave. And I think because they already have, I mean, they, they were in well-paid jobs, but they're just okay to leave because they were not happy with the way things are. So I guess that's also sort of beginning to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. It's in the air, yes. I think more and more people are thinking that they would not want to uh, enter just the regular grooves that are set and would want to carve out a niche for them, yes. Yeah, any more additions? Anyone, anything to share? Yeah, like like you said, right, Monica? It's it's a the transactional thing and it is so... Uh, it's like unspoken, you know, there is this, there are these little subtle moments, I mean, you know, times and, and in a, on a consistent, you know, basis, there's no, so like, all right, it's so unspoken and between every, any relationship or whether you see, and then I notice, I mean, we got a, you know, you don't do that with your pet, right? I mean, I have noticed this, we got a pet around four years back and I don't I don't transact with her that you know that okay if I take you for a walk in the morning uh, when you come back like you know give me three licks and I'll like it's <laughs> it's such a you know these kind of parameters and uh, and unfortunately what happens is if I'm, I'm just taking the example of a pet right now because that's what I can see but you have the pet at home you you know you are uh, you don't have that transaction with them but yet you continue the transaction within the relationship with the humans right and it's sort of yeah and yeah only then yeah you reflect or you think about that uh, oh there is a possibility it's not you know the end of uh, anything yeah so, yeah, beautiful example. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yes. Thank you. Lakshna ji, you wanted to add on? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Monica, that besides joy in each activity, I think maybe if we felt deep, heartfelt gratitude 
for everything and everyone and try to feel that at all times, then maybe the transactional nature would really dissolve. It happens with me. So that's why I can feel that. I've done this, okay? When I was much younger, I've done this. Pray and, you know, I hope this happens and so on and so forth. But as time went by and I learned the importance of gratitude, I realized that there's so much to be grateful for. You know, a roof over our head, a warm bed, children, whatever. And there are so many times the kids, I mean, my kids are grown up now, 30 plus. But they still want to do their own thing. And as a mother, sometimes I find myself uh, saying, you know, aise mat karna, not safe. And then I look at myself and I say, what am I doing? I'm not letting them grow up. And then I just, you know, offer deep gratitude and just pray for their protection. That's all. And that really helps. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, yes, yes, yeah. I think as always, we just have to remind ourselves because we forget, you know, being grateful. One has to really cultivate gratitude. Otherwise, uh, we just get too focused on what's missing from life rather than, you know, what's there in life and that we have a life which we can use in order to benefit and do something good with this life so yeah thank you for that reminder absolutely yeah we actually shift uh, from the ego consciousness which is always looking at the lack in the lives uh, what is missing what is lacking what needs to be fixed so all the time focused on the lack 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 and suddenly shifting a, it's almost a radical shift in consciousness when we uh, remind ourselves to be grateful and we step into our truer self inner being when we consciously do that so yes absolutely very important hmm. okay so i'm just uh, going back to the document so as you we were discussing you know this commercial aspect this transactional mind is what needs a radical shift that the moment I see anything arising, which is appearing as a reflection of, I want to be in transaction, you know, you have given something, offered something, and now you are waiting for some return. We have to, again, you know, let it be and not follow the dictate of that want and demand. So this commercial aspect needs to be uh, changed. Yeah, just a second. Yeah, sorry. So let's go further. Yeah, I think I'll just finish this and then maybe the next person can take up the next one. So this commercial aspect, mother says, I tell you, so long as there is calculation in the mind or the feelings and sensations, so long as there is some calculation, more or less acknowledged, it is bargaining it is not love. So I think to just become more and more conscious of whenever calculation arises, because it can't just disappear. That won't happen that, oh, I my mind is now free of calculation. So the ripples of calculation and manipulation will arise, but I will just have to look at them. And as in, you know, Bodhicharya Avatara, Shanti Deva, you know, the Buddhist teacher, he says that uh, I look at you, now I see you, and I see the malice you have done to me in all the cycles of existence and I am now not going to listen to your dictate. So not to listen to the dictate of calculation and to absorb ourselves back in the present moment with the breath or you know, with the divine name and not to listen to the dictate of calculation. Let the ripple be there and not listen, ignoring. Yeah, and then maybe we can read this one. So would anyone want to read this next passage for us? that the human expression of love? 
uh, yeah, this one, but if you don't love me, I shall love you. This one. Can you see this? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. That begins to be better. And what is better still is not to ask oneself whether one is loved or not. One should be absolutely indifferent to that. And that begins to be true love. One loves because one loves, not at all because one receives a response to one's love or because the other person loves you. All those conditions, that is not love. One loves because one cannot do otherwise but love. One loves because one loves. One doesn't care at all about what will happen. One is perfectly satisfied with the feeling of one's love. One loves because one loves. This is beautiful. Is that it? All the rest is bargaining. It is not love. I can see only up to there. Yes, yes, this much is enough. Yeah, we can pause, take a pause here. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, anything anyone wants to share at this? I love this line, Monica. One loves because one cannot do otherwise but love. I think this is how we really need to be, you know, so full of love that nothing else matters. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. And I think it reminds me really of flowers. Uh, and mother has given, of course, uh, those of us who are connected, they would know that mother has given to each flower. There is a significance. She has given a word. There is a flower for gratitude. There is a flower for divine surrender. So we know that. But uh, what aspect comes of a flower to me that, for example, a rose. You know, whether you look at a rose, not look at a rose, you pluck the rose, not pluck it, you crush it under your feet, it just can't help but being a rose, you know, a delicate, nice fragrance rose. I think that's how all of us have the capacity to become that whether you return my love, not return my love, whether you reject my love, accept my love, you know, it doesn't matter because there is nothing but love that can be offered. So the seeds of all the ill and hate and everything, they have slowly gone, you know, totally disappeared. That the seeds are not left. And I, I remember this story of Buddha. I think Buddha, uh, somebody abused Buddha while she, he was just roaming around wandering. And, uh, and Buddha was not swayed, of course. And the person said that, how can this be? You know, I'm abusing you like hell and you are not really, it, it's not bothering you. So then the Buddha says that if uh, two things, you know, one is that if someone offers you a gift and one refuses to accept that gift, who does that gift belong to? So that person says, of course, to the person who was gifting. So. <laughs> So he says, okay, so if I'm not accepting the abuse you are giving me, so it goes back to you. I mean, you take your gift back. And then somebody was commenting upon it that why Buddha was able to do that? Because he has no seeds of anger left in him. So the anger needs seeds to sprout. And there is no seed of anger, ego consciousness, you know, there is no seed left. So how can he be any other person but the Buddha? You know, full of compassion, love and kindness. So I think that is our human potential that slowly, slowly, slowly knowing that how much these negative seeds, they torture first of all me and then the others, you know, slowly just weeding off all the seeds that are there so that you don't have the capacity to hate. You can't hate, you can't be angry. I think slowly if that uh, happens, it really uh, would be so much of kindness towards our own self and you know, parallelly with others that you can't be anything but 
the loving self you know, one loves because one cannot do otherwise but love so i can't be anything but a gentle rose flower no matter what you you know whether you crush me and the other thing which i want to add on uh, shri aurobindo shares that even when our love when it is rejected to know that it's the divine who is rejecting it and the divine who is offering so the divine in me is offering the divine in the other is rejecting so how does it matter really since there is just one being in operation everywhere so i think that aspect also gave me a lot of solace that even if the love is not accepted which hurts many of us you know most of us are hurt that you know when you don't get any thing back in return a smile a gesture an affection you know something some respect some honor and when you don't get it instead of getting humiliated or insulted if i can say that okay you know it's the divine who is rejecting and it's the divine who is offering so where do i come in the picture what do i need to be bothered about so that really gives a lot of solace to the heart yeah would anyone want to share any reflection here yeah thank you krish for sharing yes so uh, just reading uh, what krish has shared here i don't think love can be attained we can we can't become love instead love which is very our very nature is revealed once we remove our nonsense absolutely 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 yes thank you thank you for sharing so i think to uh, to notice that whenever we are in this state of non sticky disinterested loving presence it is benefiting first of all me and then the rest others and to have a taste to develop a taste for that kind of a living and to then be very sensitive to any unease uh, wherever by mistake it happens you know to be very sensitive to that unease wherever we there is manipulation demand you know a torture on myself and others you know, feelings of hate ill will blame jealousy anger whenever these are there to be very sensitive to them and to notice them as intruders enemies as sri aurobindo says and not our part of our true nature and not to follow those dictates so i feel that uh, a conscious effort needs to be there in order to notice these offenders which are always there and living in our own house as as if it's their own palace so i think this really uh, speaks it out for itself this passage that not and what is better still is not to ask oneself whether one is loved or not so not to even dwell upon oh am i loved am i not loved does mother love me does that person love me who i love the most not to even go there one should be absolutely indifferent to that and this is where the third element of true love which is upeksha disinterestedness that you are not interested in that coming back to you so absolutely indifferent to that and that begins to be true love one loves because one loves so there is not you know anything that is expected out of that love not at all because one receives a response to one's love or because the other person's love you so if these two elements can be uh, removed becoming conscious the moment i see again a demand arising not to listen to the dictate of that demand many a times our mood becomes very bad you must have seen you know when you don't get any affection in return for your offering the mood becomes uh, it's like a dark cloud comes of bad mood and you listen to the dictate without being aware that oh it's just a dark cloud of mood which i don't really have to identify with you know i can just reject that mood i don't have to follow the dictate and it is coming from from the vital because the vital gets disappointed 
it's the vital in us which is mother says it's the culprit you know it gets disappointed when something is not given back in return so to see it as a weakness of the vital and to not to the not to listen to the dictate of that bad mood and to still remain with the mother inside our heart and refuse to follow the dictate all those conditions that is not love so it whenever there are conditions cannot be love one loves because one cannot do otherwise but love one loves because one loves one doesn't care at all about what will happen one is perfectly satisfied with the feelings feeling of one's love so you lose the capacity to get in a bad mood no matter whether your love is accepted rejected you know whatever you lose that capacity you lose that taste for a bad mood i think that would be really good victory over the mood yeah all the rest is bargaining it is not love okay yeah any uh, comments here anyone on this passage maybe we can take these two passages today maybe uh, then we can take reflections and end here so would anyone want to read these two for us i can read monica yeah i'll read the first passage yes please the small beginning is this the need when one loves that what one loves or the person one loves should know that he is loved but in relation with the divine one loves the divine but insists that the divine should know that one loves him that's the beginning of the fall one does not even think about the real thing it doesn't even slightly touch the mind it is a long 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 way to go from what men call love to 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 true love a long way should i go ahead or um yes you can actually no. yeah you can go ahead yeah maybe, yeah, maybe take this one also the next one yeah not those who say if you love me i love you that indeed is at the very bottom of the ladder right at the bottom almost in the pit there is still a lower rung love me and i shall see if i love you there you have to deal with altogether disgusting people i am speaking only of the need of reciprocity reciprocity that is the first step of the descending scale thank you yeah thank you so i think to see that this is just a step to our higher possibilities and not to get really disappointed that oh i am still here <laughs> because many of us may see that we are here but uh, mother is not taking it in that sense that uh, we have to stop being at the reciprocity level that is just that we are on the first step and there are many 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 steps that we have to uh, travel climb up so in that aspect i think uh, mother is sharing this that this can become a ladder to a pure kind of a love which is not mixed with all these demands bargaining calculations so in that aspect we have to see this not in the aspect of disappointment that oh my god you know i am still here <laughs> yeah any reflections anyone yeah uh, i have a funny thing to share here so like nowadays uh, in tv shows or maybe in uh, people in the us i don't know like few of them are relatives who live in the us uh, they feel that uh, a need to say i love you at the end of every conversation or when they, at the end of every day right i don't know uh, how that is it's part of their culture or what but uh, like one of this uh, relative had come here and then she was quite sick 
uh, and then we had just gone to visit her and then we were just saying yeah okay uh, take care and you know, we were trying to walk her but then she said you know she she was deeply offended because we didn't say like i love you and like <laughs> okay like you know we generally don't do that but yeah sure like we do love you cuz you know we need you to get better and then like she she was not she was extremely offended and angry she was just like why don't you say i love you i love you to each other then how would the other person know and then like it was rather odd cuz i've never seen like anyone saying like i love you in here like in our household or in any of the our relatives house like it's a given right your family that you you do love like why would you need to keep emphasizing it and first of all if you do that it it feels very weird yeah yeah very funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's where i would i also like to add no so between friends monica i mean all of us between friends um again it is unspoken you love your friend i mean there is so much of acceptance no as a friend uh when <laughs> you don't even have to say oh i love you anything your friend says you know it's all because i don't know they somehow seem to accept you just for who you are and i remember i think in the last session i think krish had mentioned when uh, in romantic love when you tell somebody like you know oh, i accept you or i love you just for who you are it's not it was at least not taken very you know there was not much of appreciation in that kind of love and uh, it left me very conflicted for a long time but then i you know obviously worked on myself and figured that it's okay this is my way of you know loving and uh, yeah the, so but in friends it's so you know like yes i love you no matter what you know and yeah beautiful i think friendship is the first element of true love yeah yeah and in and the name of love we actually do torture to those relationships especially of a spouse you know uh, and, yeah yeah and i i so that that's where my so conflict has been that i always felt that even in a romantic love right in in your spouse or your you know whoever you love uh, i think friendship was such an important element to bring and to you know because that's where the foundation sort of you know for, for me i mean uh, was that uh, this is my way of loving and i because i accept you first as my true friend and then you are my you know spouse or as whatever husband wife child and uh, yeah so it took, it i tortured myself for many years on this and but yeah it's now it's sort of sinking much better beautiful you know yesterday only i was talking to a friend and uh, we were just discussing that how when we label any relationship uh, we destroy that relationship yeah yeah because then along with that label comes the whole bundle of demands of, uh, from that role right. and we have lost a friend hmm. in that labeling and demanding and while i was talking to her i was also sharing that look like you and me have a relationship it's a very distant relationship we talk once in a while you know but we are always wishing well for each other you know mm. there is a disinterestedness yeah. like i don't want anything from her she doesn't want anything from me so there is a disinterestedness upeksha then mm. there is a friendliness which is maitri you know that you uh, want the best for the other person in a friendly way there is friendliness love deep bonding and then there is an element of also joy that whenever yes. you connect with each other there is joy delight you know and karuna is also there because uh, you feel for the other you know when other is yes. an issue you feel for it you want to reach out uh, to the other person so i think all these elements are actually severed badly the moment we sign a contract saying okay now i am your wife or husband <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and yeah and i think the most of course since it is you know you are in uh, uh, like you're in that relationship right as a spouse or you know so uh, and because you're so close continuously there is bound to be conflicts there's bound to be demands uh, and yet 
your language of love might be is so different but but in in our context or maybe in the indian culture or tradition we don't discuss right okay you know this is my way of loving or because obviously then you know if i don't do it your way then there's no other way right yeah. or you don't do it my way then yeah there is uh, yeah so. mother also talks about that whenever you you are uh, loving anybody you have to keep a lot of space and respect and honor for his way of expression his way of hmm. feelings because if i feel so badly for you now expect the same person you know the other person to feel badly for me also you know badly intensely yeah. but that's yeah. not right because i'm superimposing my way of loving to him right, right and that's not yeah. going to work because the person is a different person altogether yeah <laughs> so to respect that each person has their share of feelings and they have the honor and freedom to respect that you know to right. express yeah yeah okay. thank you mm, thank you yeah. and also this aspect that uh, meera was touching upon you know the need to show too much of i love you i love you we don't even know what is i we don't even know what is you <laughs> you know yeah uh, <laughs> i know what you mean because it's so when you don't like if you don't say it back i i mean i have also experienced it i mean you know there have been times that oh you know why didn't he or she like say uh and then i would also like sort of reflect on it and say okay what is this because this need to you know also reconfirm or reassure or just sort of be there so that yeah has uh, definitely yeah these things are sort of clearing up uh, over a period of time yeah yeah and i feel that when we are not fully in our relationships because we are so distracted all the time and focused on my needs my expectations we are not usually we are not mm. offering our selves usually mm. we are always demanding for our selves yeah distracting in our own world so there you know because you feel this guilt consciousness that oh you know most of the times actually you are not there for that person you know who you claim <laughs> i think there to suppress that guilt and to have a feeling of no i do love you i think there we need even more to express it out loud uh, so that i can yeah. suppress that non availability uh, right yes yeah and Otherwise, also, no need yeah please go ahead yeah, yeah sorry i no i also so that's what so when that you know when i see my uh, i also see my daughter growing up right so now her idea of love is so different like uh, because obviously you know she watches maybe a little bit of movies or now that you know the interaction between uh, the other uh, gender is different and then they are reading you know these um, ro- romantic novels and uh, she says oh but you don't say it like this you know you don't say it you don't know like this is how you have to say it and uh, i so yeah it puts me also in a in a little bit of a you know like uh, conflict like not conflict but suddenly i am like attacked from as a parent you know oh i have to do these things to also you know show uh but yeah but i said okay i i you know i will listen to you i will you know try my this thing but uh, obviously the book i cannot fulfill what is in the book right now that's another way that you are learning another language um, but i guess when they are you know when she she's about a little more older than and these talks will help us to sort of you know figure out that yeah this is how my love or that's how her love is so, yeah beautiful yeah. i think we all need our experiences right yeah <laughs> to get disenchanted first <laughs> know, think, yes. you know this hunger you know that your missing part will be found somewhere else something uh, that you yeah, continue yeah. to feel missing 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 will be found somewhere else in this world i think yeah. we all have to go through our disillusionment we can't yeah. help we have i I, i remember i think when i was uh, somebody was discussing i mean this was quite some time back especially when that movie had come out bajirao mastani 
and oh my god this was like like some of them said this is the love that you, this is love like <laughs> i okay all right if this is what is your love then yeah but to that kind of love that expectation that demand yeah it's so hard to live up that yeah and some yeah, you because you keep hearing stories right but also if you look a little more deeper i mean yes there is love like you know soni mahiwal and all those i mean you know stories that we've heard right there is it's just that i think the outside external view of what love was uh, didn't probably allow also for them to realize true love right and therefore either death was the only choice or you know so yeah thank you thank you yeah so i just you know while you were sharing i thought i'll just rewind ourselves of this that shurubindo shares and i had shared with us uh, earlier also that he shares that this image is about love that we create from bollywood hollywood or these romantic novels and all that it is a distorted image that we carry and that's what we fail because we continue to want that kind of love which i have seen in the movies because we are so impressed by those movies and even those novels that that is what now we need in our life so it's like a bad kind of conditioning that has happened and here shurubindo shares that actually you know it's very important uh, yeah he says some people are full of a very pure very high very selfless psychic love and yet they know nothing about it so they can't even say that oh i am loving in nature that kind of an innocence you know see so such kind of a love that they know nothing about it and they think that they are cold dry and without love because this admixture of vital vibration this demand this want for affection the hunger for giving affection the hunger for re receiving affection all that demand is not there so the admixture of vital vibration is absent for them love begins and ends with this vibration you know so they just have a very pure vibration of love which is not mixed with this uh, wanting to have something back or some this uh, emotional expression of love and then he says that as i said some people are quite beyond that they have been able to control it in such a way that it does not get mixed up with anything else they have in themselves this psychic love which is full of self forgetfulness so they forget about their selves no need no desire no want from anybody so there is a self forgetfulness you know self offering and self forgetfulness full of self forgetfulness of self giving compassion generosity nobility of life and is a great power of identification means i can empathize what the other person is going through so the power of identification so most of these people think that they are cold or indifferent so this is where he is actually talking of the pure vibration of love i think this is very important to look at that the pure vibration of love may actually appear like cold and indifferent so most of these people they think they are cold or indifferent they are very nice people you see but they do not love in the way that we would want love to happen and sometimes they themselves don't know because there is no interest in anybody's life there is no demand from anybody to give affection to share affection and then he shares i have known people who thought they had no love because they did not have this vital vibration this emotional hunger usually when people speak speak of emotions they are actually speaking of vital emotions this stickiness yeah so beautiful yeah i can i truly yeah i can get this i mean it's so 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 this they you know because i uh, having i mean thinking that like i said the language of this love is like uh, if i say it in a context it means i love if i don't say it then there's no uh, there's you know the again the reciprocation is different if you yeah how you 
portrait like some like some people say right when i cook food for you uh, or that is love yeah but the thing is when i've cooked the food then why do i ask how is the food right like i i have cooked it i have put it i have offered it i've put it on the table and that's it you know i mean that is i uh, just an example i i know because yeah i've seen like you know uh, as moms or as lot, a lot of the other ways that you say right okay i do this for you or but then yeah there's always that yes how is it or how yeah there's always a need for uh, that validation that okay this is yeah thank you thank you yeah anyone wants to add on I think we see this with very little children. You know, if you have, I'm sure all of us have witnessed almost newborns or a few months old. You know, that uh, they have this quality of, by very nature of whether the mind is still developing or whatever, the the quality that they are so self-absorbed. Little children, you know, very little. They are so self-absorbed. They are just into themselves, experiencing, sensing, you know, making sense of the environment. And they, when when us adults, they are around such young people, young young children, you know, infants, and even before that, we we feel like you know we are immersed in love. We want to be. Most of us who are sensitive to this, many of us may not claim that they don't like children and they want to be away from children that's okay but i am talking of those people who have really felt the vibration of love emanating from newborns and infants like they're not wanting anything from you yeah it's so, so, so true no like babies are so cute yeah and they're all into themselves they're selves yeah totally self absorbed self forgetful and self absorbed and not even sense of me has developed yet you know because of course it takes some time the sense of me takes time to develop so the sense of me also has not yet developed and i, I feel that uh, that's a very good pointer and reminder for me to you know how self absorbed uh, this presence of love can be you know? and that's why people who are you know adults who have now hardly any love uh, left in their life because you know of the ways we, in which we live they want to be next to little children you know that we want little children at home so that we can actually feel that really pure intensity of presence of love i feel that with little children little ones so whether you are giving them attention not giving them attention they are not really interested in that too young for that but they are just something very special about them and that's why in fact one can go on and on elaborating on this and they say that they are actually in the beginning time they have a soft spot over their head little children you know newborns and that's because they are still connected with the universal consciousness the ego individuality has not yet developed and slowly 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 you know this becomes hardened this closes the lid and then uh, a separate ego individuality begins to develop and slowly we have to actually first develop it and then again open that lid so that we again connect with the universal consciousness mm. Yeah, any last comments, anyone before we end? Thank you, Monica. It was really beautiful session. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. So too. many things you are addressed today. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. So thanks, everyone. And yeah. <laughs>
And thank you so much, everyone, for the reflections. Yes, yes. each one thank helps. You. And just taking last one moment before we leave, uh, just to share this merit. May all of us, all the sentient beings, may all the beings have peace at heart and joy and progress in life. Sharing our merit with all the beings. May all of us grow and develop and progress in our lives and have true fulfillment. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining in today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.